Good morning and happy Lord's Day to all. By the way, I would like to greet all mommies a happy, happy Mother's Day. May you fully enjoy your time with your families as we all together worship our Creator, our Lord, and our King. Let us have a minute of adoration. Psalm 31, 23 says, Love the Lord, all you His saints. The Lord preserves the faithful, but abundantly repays the one who acts in pride. Now, let us take a minute of confession. Psalm 32 verse 5 says, I acknowledge my sin to you, and I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Let us now take a minute to thank God amidst life's challenges. You know, Psalm 100 verse 4 says, Enter His gates with thanksgiving and His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him. Bless His name. This time, let us take our time to present our supplication to the Lord. Psalm 55, 1 says, Give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not yourself from my plea for mercy. Let us pray and let us bow down before God.
Once again, let us close in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hi, we are happy to have 20 prayer warriors who joined our midweek prayer meeting last Wednesday. We hope to meet more people next week via Zoom. Link will be posted around 7.30 p.m. Start logging in around 7.55. We will start exactly at 8 p.m. There will be a reading of Psalms, short devotion, then we will proceed directly to our prayer proper. UECG is now officially using New Millennium Evangelical Church's daily devotional material. We encourage you to read and reflect on the material posted by Deacon Jeremy Bobadilla. Just a reminder, daily prayer concerns will still be posted every 10 a.m. and 8 p.m. As the Lord leads, may our hearts be filled with generosity for the work of the gospel. 1 Chronicles 16.29 says, Ascribe to the Lord the glory due His name. Bring an offering and come before Him. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. Starting next week, we will have a new series in the book of Esther. I invite you to read Esther chapter 1, verses 1 to 22. Next week's title will be, Who is your king? Who is your king? Yours truly will be giving the message. Please pray for me. A call to worship is an invitation for the congregation to turn their attention towards God. Psalm 9 verses 1 to 2 says, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. I will recount all of your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and exult in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. Let us all together praise our Lord. Psalm 147 verses 1 to 6. Praise the Lord, for it is good to sing praises to our God, for it is pleasant and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars. He gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the humble. He casts the wicked to the ground. Psalm 99 verses 1 to 9 The Lord reigns, let the peoples tremble. He sits enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth quake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is exalted over all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awesome name. Holy is he. The king in his might loves justice. You have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Exalt in the Lord our God, worship at his footstool, holy is he. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Samuel was also among those who called upon his name. They called to the Lord and he answered them. In the pillar of the cloud he spoke to them. They kept his testimonies and the statute that he gave them. O Lord our God, you answered them. You are a forgiving God to them, but an avenger of their wrongdoings. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at His holy mountain, for the Lord our God is holy. Almighty God, 
we come before you today to proclaim that you are excellent and that your glory is evident in all of creation. You are holy and perfect in all your ways, yet you stoop to love us. Fallen and sinful rebels that we are, we do not deserve your kindness and care, yet you have set your love upon us. You pursue us with your everlasting promise to work all things for our good and your own glory. Father, melt our hearts with wonder, love, and praise to you. Father, forgive us for the many sins that we have commit each day. We cast ourselves on your mercy and thank you for the blood of Christ. This morning as we worship you, may it be acceptable to you. And as we worship you with our mothers, mommies out there, Lord, we pray for your guidance and blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading for today is taken from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 6 to 9. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 6 to 9. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Allow me to introduce our speaker for today. She is a professor at the University of the Philippines where she has been teaching graduate courses in educational psychology. She has degrees in music, Christian studies, and educational psychology, and has taken postdoctoral studies at Harvard. She has also taught apologetics and Christian education in various seminaries. She's authored 10 books, her latest 2019 title being In the Triumph Song of Life, Turning Adversity to Strength. Aside from teaching and writing, she also speaks in other universities, academic conferences, corporate groups, and churches. Previously, a youth pastor and choir director at the United Evangelical Church of Manila, she and her husband, Caleb, are now members of Union Church of Manila, where they serve in various ministries. Above all these, she is a mother to their two adult children, Crystal and Christian, who respectively reside in London and Hong Kong. Let's welcome Dr. Grace Xiangguan Ku. As it is Mother's Day today, she will speak on the topic, being mothers to our children and parents. Happy Mother's Day to everyone. Everyone who is a mother, and happy Mother's Day to your mothers. I'm sure today's uh, Mother's Day is something that is very memorable. And uh, even as I accepted uh, this uh, speaking engagement, to preach in your church many months ago, we never expected it for me to reach out to you this way. My topic for this day, I, I hope uh, it's a morning service or afternoon service, is being mothers to our children and parents. Being mothers to our children and parents. There are many blessings and expectations of parenting. Children, first of all, are a gift from God. Psalm 127 says, Children are a heritage from the Lord. Offsprings are a reward from Him. So if you have children, they are your heritage. And they are your reward. Secondly, parents are most responsible for how their children turn out. In Ephesians 6, it says, 
do not provoke your children to anger. Rather, bring them up with discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. Bring them up with discipline and instruction from where? Whose instruction? Whose teachings? That comes from the Lord. Third is to seize the teachable moments. Teachable moments are not only moments in school, in the church. Every day, there are teachable moments for us to teach our children. Fourthly, parenting is a process that following different standards will bring different results. In Proverbs 22, it says, Train up a child in the way he should go. He should go. There are standards. There's a proper way. And fifthly, the kids' development should be holistic. As Luke 2 says, Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God, and in favor with men. So there is psychological, physical, spiritual, and social development. So let us remind ourselves, if our children are still young and when they are no longer young, that there are blessings from our parenting and there are expectations for parents to do. Because there's power in a family. As a psychologist, Paul Pearsall says, the entire cycle of life is contained and experienced and explained within the family. And the persons who are able to stay family throughout their lives, to call one another, to remember one another, to gather at emergencies, to extend their sense of family to their everyday life, were the healthiest, happiest persons I ever saw. And it's in this time, a time of emergency. If we can call one another, remember one another, then we are among the healthiest, happiest people. As Proverbs 14 verse 1 says, The wise woman builds her house, but with her own hands, the foolish ones tears hers down. How important a woman is in a home, in a family. And uh, today, I'd like to share very briefly two women, strong women, who are the pillars of their family. One is Jochebed. Jochebed. And who is he? Who is she? Who was she? First of all, this name may sound familiar to you, not because of what the mother is remembered for, but for what her son did. Jacobet was, was the daughter of Levi and the granddaughter of Jacob. Remember, Jacob had 12 sons, and one of them was Levi. And Levi had this daughter, Jacobet. But more importantly, she would be remembered to be the mother of Moses. So during that time, in Egypt, the Hebrews were multiplying so much quicker and faster and more frequently than the Egyptians. So Pharaoh was afraid that they will be outnumbered. So there was a decree that all boys, Hebrew boys, should be killed. And that was not a really good time to be born. And yet Jacobet, having Aaron and Miriam, now had Moses. And what can we learn from Jacobet? First of all, she was such a wise woman 
who could protect her family, her children, very courageously. She knew that after three months, hiding Moses was very risky. And then she made a waterproof basket, knowing how to do using the reed to have this basket, had Moses lie down in the basket and had Miriam looked after her baby brother and Moses landed where Pharaoh's daughter was bathing. Not only was she courageous to protect her son, she planned it so wisely. She was a wise woman. She knew how to protect her baby, how to, how to use the basket, and yet she knew how to uh, uh, instruct Miriam to take care of the baby brother. And when Pharaoh's daughter saw this little boy, Miriam approached Pharaoh's daughter because she, she knew that the baby would, knew, would, would need a nurse, a Hebrew nurse. So there it was, Jacobet was able to take care of Moses and nursed him. And there, for the first few years of life, was able to teach him faithfully of God's commandments. So what do we learn from Jacobet? That the mother should protect the family courageously to plan wisely and to teach faithfully. Our main scripture for today is Deuteronomy 6, verse 6 to 9. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down, when you get up, Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. This is the manifesto of a parent. And what do we learn from here? Look at these pictures. These are teflin, those things that the Hebrew boys would put on their heads and on their hands. Teflin originally were Egyptian ornaments that served as amulets. But the Hebrews used teflin and inside these boxes are verses from Isaiah. So in other words, the word of God superseded the words that were used for amulet. Now on the door is a mezzah on the right side of the door. Every Hebrew boy would touch that before going inside the house. Now, in these few verses, we learn about parenting with these questions. Who to teach? What to teach? Where to teach? When to teach? Why to teach? and how to teach. First of all, who should teach? The mothers. But during that time, it was addressed to fathers. Yeah, fathers and mothers are to teach their children. They are given the first responsibility of teaching their children. What to teach? The commandments that I give you today. So in the first five books of the Bible, there's a Torah, the commandments that all the young children have to be taught. And how to teach? Impress. Impress is to make it, make it a mark. Yeah? It is impressed so deeply into a child that he will not forget to discuss 
and there should be with intention and action as symbolized by the tefillin on the forehead intention and the action you, you saw the bands on the hand intention and action and it is has to be clear to all the people around with the mezuzah on the door everybody would know that this is a jewish family when to teach when you sit down when you walk along when you lie down when you get up a daily life every day whatever position whatever time you are to teach your children where to teach at home and on the road why to teach so that it might go well with you and your children so for your own sake as well and for the sake of your children you have to teach them well so in a few verses six seven eight nine four verses we learn who to teach we learn what to teach how to teach when to teach where to teach and why to teach so i've uh, in for several years as a parenting uh, speaker and writer always use the symbol of roots and wings the roots refer to foundation if we build in our children strong foundation it gives them a sense of security in fact and it gives them core values for their life and it builds faith roots refer to foundation security values and faith and after having strong roots now the children will be able to fly there are wings that we built on our children for our children and they refer to independence freedom confidence and dreams so make sure before you give wings to your children that they have strong roots roots and wings symbol for great parenting now since i teach psychology i'd like to just share one theory and this theory is uh, about parenting style Romrin's theory so people thought that we should have lots of warmth but no expectation oh that would be bad or else very high expectations and no warmth so between or among rather these four different styles of parenting which one is the best the one that has high expectation yes yet giving high warmth authoritative is not authoritarian authoritarian style high expectation but very little warmth almost the parenting style of one or two generations ago among the chinese families authoritarian on the other hand nowadays parents are too permissive high warmth everybody's friend to her child but low expectation almost always giving indulgence to their children and that's permissive parenting the worst kind of parenting is the negligent low expectation and low warmth abundant children are abundant so of these four types authoritative authoritarian permissive and negligent parenting style which is your style let us strive to give high expectation for our children yet strongly support them give them warmth and be able to be companions as well to our children authoritative parenting 
and a heartwarming story of love and devotion. The second part of my sermon is about how to be parents now to our parents. These days, people are in a sandwich generation, taking care of their children, yet you have to take care of your parents as well. Sandwiched. So, the story of Naomi and Ruth, one of our favorite stories. And who was Naomi? Naomi was a Moab, Moabite, Moab, Moab woman. Yeah? So the husband of Moab was uh, Abimelech. So there was famine in Israel and they went to Moab. They had two children, Malon and Kilion. And what a tragedy happened to this family. All three men, Abimelech, Malon, and Kilion, died, leaving Naomi and two, rather, Naomi, pardon me, may, although they were in Moab, Naomi was also a Jewish person. But their daughters-in-law, both Orpah, not Oprah, but Orpah and Ruth, were Moabite. So when Naomi decided to go back to Bethlehem, after the death of her husband and two sons, she advised Orpah and Ruth to find new husband. At first, both daughters-in-law refused that. But eventually, Orpah agreed. But Ruth would not leave Naomi. And so Ruth replied, Don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people. And your God, my God. And what can we learn from Ruth? Who parented Naomi, in fact. Yeah? Ruth was such an obedient daughter-in-law that you wish your daughter-in-law, if you have daughters-in-law, would learn from Ruth. But most of us should learn from Ruth to take care of our aging parents. So Ruth went to the fields to pick up leftover grains. She was humble enough to do manual labor. What can we learn from Ruth? Her devotion and determination to stay with Naomi. And although he, she didn't have any children and her husband had passed away, she wanted to stay with the mother-in-law. That speaks a lot about the mother-in-law as well, right? Secondly, she had such reverence and respect for the religion, for the faith of Naomi. For your God is my God. Your God is my God. Not longer a pagan. Thirdly, she was very diligent and discerning. She went to pick up the fields, the leftover grains in the fields, very diligent daily. And she was very discerning. And she was able, of course, at the prodding of the mother-in-law, to really find a good husband, Boaz. And so Boaz and Ruth's son was Obed, and their grandson was Jesse, and their great-grandson was David, King David. So was in uh, Ruth blessed by her being a relative, ancestor of Jesus Christ himself. So Ruth was such a great parent to her mother-in-law. So today, as we parent our own children, let us also learn from Ruth on how to take care of our aging parents or parents-in-law. And what was, the, what was the comment of the neighbors? 
about Naomi. At first, she was a tragic figure. But the women or the women said to Naomi, your daughter-in-law who loves you and who is better to give you than seven sons has given him birth. Better than seven sons. Wow. What a compliment. So in this family, let's see, you'll be parenting young children, yet you have some of you have to live with your in-laws, parents-in-law, or parents. And so, our responsibility is not just to, to care too much about our children and neglecting our parents or parents-in-law. And here is this important verse. Start children off on the way they should go, and even when they are old, they will not turn from it. That is a lesson for today in our parenting, our children. And by the way, when these children grow up to be adults and mothers themselves, they will not turn from the teaching that was instilled on them when they were young. And another verse that gives us inspiration and courage, honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise honor your father and mother so today as we remember as we celebrate mother's day we are happy that we are our mothers to our young children or adult children but also that we can honor our parents our mothers particularly and to honor them today talk to them visit them if possible and that is the first commandment with a promise so what gifts do we give our children or our parents i'd like to quote from this passage we give ourselves when we give gifts of the heart no longer bags or or food, or expensive jewelry. The best gifts are gifts of the heart. We give ourselves when we give gifts of the heart. And what are they? Love, kindness, joy, understanding, sympathy, tolerance, forgiveness. Let us give our parents today gifts of the heart. Gifts of the mind as well. Ideas, dreams, purposes, ideals, principles, plans, inventions, projects, poetry. These are gifts of the mind that we can give our children and our parents. And lastly, gifts of the words like encouragement, inspiration, and guidance. The best gifts are the gifts of the heart, gifts of the mind, and gifts of words. Lastly, I want to wish everyone happy Mother's Day. And on this very different Mother's Day, let us remember those who have lost their parents or their mothers in this coronavirus pandemic. And for those who are left behind, to always remember your mothers and parents with fondness. I wish you all well. Stay strong, stay safe, and goodbye. Thank you. Let's all stand for the benediction. And now, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you believe in Him so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. Amen.